Do you need some hacks to help yourself stay consistent with your workouts? Watch this. Our next caller is Chris from Minnesota. Chris, what's happening? How can we help you? How's it going, guys? Good. All right. Uh, first off, I have to do the uh, obligatory thank you for uh, the content you produce. Uh, I really like that you guys make uh, the health and fitness space uh, entertaining to listen to on a daily basis. Thank you. Awesome. awesome. That's all, Justin. <laughs> No, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, my question is about uh, routine and consistency. Uh, I'm getting back into lifting and fitness after about a year long break, and I'm starting into MAPS Anabolic. Uh, I've learned that I'm a very routine driven person, and when I struggle to maintain consistency, uh, it's usually because uh, my weekly routine gets thrown off for one reason or another. So, the actual question I have is what other hacks and daily routines have you guys found? To help yourselves or past clients make uh, health and fitness a part of their daily life. Oh, did yeah. you, Chris? Did you listen to the? I did an. We did an episode, or was it? Q, I don't know if it was Q and Air or an episode that we did, and I talked about the weekend hack. Did you hear me talk about that yet? Uh, was that with uh, Jason Phillips? Oh, it might have been with yeah, Jason. Was it recent? Yeah, I think so. It was. It was a recent episode. It might have been with Jason. I can't. Remember. But I basically what I was talking about was uh, making your like win the weekend, and then the the week tends to follow, right? So, in the past, uh, you know, I used to train really hard and consistent Monday through Friday. I was the most dialed on my diet. Didn't miss my routine because my whole whole routine was there. I work. I had work schedule where I got to work at the same time and left work at the same time. And because I had scheduled clients all day long, I had to be very regimented about what time I ate. And so it was really easy for me to stay tight Monday through Friday. And then Saturday or Sunday would be, oh, you know, I sleep in, I'm tired. And then maybe I'll watch a little football on Sundays. Hey, if I'm going to enjoy <laughs> off the diet, maybe that's when I'll have my pizza, you know. So what I found was uh, many of these weekends, I would easily have one or two days that actually would kind of cancel all the good work that I did in the, the previous week because I was moving so little, sometimes not training. And then also if I were to overconsume, it would be on those days. And so I had switched this mindset up about, I don't know, seven years ago or so, maybe even longer, where I said, okay, I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on myself uh, throughout the week. I know I'm going to have some days off or I miss workouts or maybe I you know, eat off the meal plan, but I'm going to win Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, um, that's going to become my day where I'm, I'm more tight around the diet. And then if I want to cut loose during the week, I will. And what I found was it sets the tone for the week. And because it's easier for me to be consistent during the week, even though I gave myself the flexibility to go off the plan or, or stop or take a day off, I wanted to stay consistent. And just you know, winning the weekends was a huge hack for me. So I don't know if that's something that you've implemented or tried, uh, but anybody that I've taught that to uh, sees a, a big difference in their consistency. Yeah, you know, Chris, I'm going to comment a little bit on your question because I don't think people realize just how important this question that you're asking is of all of the, for the average person, of all the factors that they need to consider when it comes to their workout routine, the most important factor is how can I organize things or do things in a way that will lead to consistency? Because a bad workout, I mean, of course, if it doesn't hurt you and all that stuff, but a, but a workout that's not that effective done consistently is more effective than a super effective workout that's done consistently. It's the most important thing for the average person. If I had to look at everything, I'd say, just be consistent, number one, then let's look at kind of everything else. It's like the biggest rock, okay? Here's the single yep. the single most effective thing I've ever seen uh, help someone with consistency. And this is only if this particular thing works for the person. But if it does, it works better than anything else. And I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a background. You know, when I managed gyms, and I managed and worked in gyms for a very long time, when you do that for a while, you notice trends in your facility. So, you know, you work in these big box gyms, you see crowds of people coming in at different times. You start to notice trends when it's busy, when it's not busy. Certain months are busier than other months. Who's mm. more consistent versus who's less consistent. And there is no group more consistent in the gym than the morning group. Okay. The, the 6 a.m., the 5, 6, and 7 a.m. crew, whatever you, whatever you want to label them, is by far the most consistent member base that you'll find in your gym. The evening people, super transient. You'll have a small group that always show up at night, but it's like the most transient is after work by far. The middle of the day, you know, maybe not as transient, but not nearly as consistent. It's the early morning crew 
Now you go to the gym. When I would go in at six, seven a.m., mm-hmm. it was always the same people in the gym, and it was like that for years. It was the same people all the time, by far. Now I, this is for me too. Now I don't like working out first thing in the morning. If I'm comparing it uh, to other times in terms of performance and strength and endurance and all that stuff. But the reason why I work out in the morning is there's no better thing I've ever done for consistency. If I start my day with my workout, I'm going to work out. If I end my day with my workout or interrupt my day with my workout, all kinds of stuff can get in the way. Even if you're fanatical, it just becomes a big pain in the butt. Work goes a little longer than you thought. Uh Uh-oh, this popped up. Got to pick up the kids. I'm tired, whatever. But if it's the first thing I do when I wake up, it's the first thing that I do and I'm the most consistent ever when I do that. So if it works for you, because this doesn't work for everybody, but if it works for you, start your day with your workouts. And if that's what you always do, there, like I said, there's nothing I've ever seen to improve consistency. No single thing I've ever done to improve consistency better than that. Yeah. I, I just wanted to add, I guess, too, in terms of like things that I, I try to figure out initially with clients, like what what's going to benefit them the most in terms of them coming back, having consistency, but also what's going to move the needle a bit more uh, that's really not invasive. So like if I'm looking at it in terms of lifestyle, like Adam's talking about winning the weekend, you know, I'm looking at certain things that will improve their posture, improve their mood, improve their energy, all these things that we can ritualize. So one thing I had clients do was uh, something they'd normally do, like take a shower in the morning, they do a wall press in the shower or they do it after they're done. They do something very simple that like covers a lot of the bases of the upper body uh, and it sets your shoulders right, sets your neck, sets everything in the upper body right posturally. Uh, and then the other one was like a 90-90, maybe that I'd have them do before they sit down uh, to, to relax. They do that first thing and watch TV or do something like that. Uh, and then, you know, if, if they're eating, if try to walk after they eat their meals, something like that where it's like, it's very action and it's something that they can keep doing that doesn't really require a lot of effort or thought, uh, which then builds momentum and builds uh, going into then meeting and seeing me uh, for the workouts. Chris, I have an, another hack that's more recent um, for me now, right? So I used to be a, an all or nothing type of guy when it comes to workout and diet. And either I'm dialed in and consistent and crushing the gym or I'm super inconsistent. And something that's changed uh, in the last probably five or six years that I'm really good about doing now that I would have never done in my 20s, which is be okay sometimes with maybe that this workout today is just squats or just Turkish get-ups. And because sometimes I'll be sitting at home and it'll be like the weekend. And I know I told myself I'm going to get a lift in and I'm just like, man, I am not feeling like a 50 minute hard training session in the gym. And so I'll, I'll play this game where I'm like talking myself out of it. And then I end up not doing it. Whereas now I kind of give myself this flexibility that, you know what, I don't, I don't need to go get 50 minutes and let's just go get four sets of squats out of I can go get four sets of squats. That doesn't take very much time. And what I find one uh, doing something like squatting, deadlifting, Turkish get-ups, overhead pressing. There's such big, good, gross motor movements that they have so much uh, they have so much carryover and so much benefit just from doing them that it's okay sometimes for me just to have a workout where that's all I do. But what actually ends up happening more often than not is I go in with that attitude that I've accepted that maybe I'll just do four sets of squats. And then once I get it going, I feel good. And then I end up wanting to finish the workout. But a lot of it is the mental game of accepting that, hey, you know what? I don't have to do a full 50 minute workout. Maybe I'll just go in and do four sets of this movement that I know is so valuable and allowing myself that that freedom to be able to just do that sometimes. And again, what I find is I end up doing more or finishing the workout. And even if I didn't, I still got a great, you know, four or five sets in of squats, which like I said, has tremendous benefit to yeah. it. Um, Chris, do you have maps prime by any chance? I do. Yeah. That's okay. been uh, a real help. Awesome. Because the, the, the stuff that Justin was talking about, obviously is in the compass test. So I just want to make sure you had that. So you knew how to do the wall press and what he was referring to. So I, I hope that all helped you out. Yeah, it does. I, you know, I really, the, the morning thing you mentioned is, is probably the biggest thing and probably also helps in developing a sleep routine too, which totally. is something mm-hmm. I struggle with as well. So totally. there's probably more benefits than just being consistent at the gym. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for calling in. I really appreciate it, guys. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, thanks, Chris. You know, I remember, you know, I remember uh, managing like when I first, I don't want to say, I was even before I became a manager. This was when I was like, you know, a weekend manager or whatever. And I would go in hella early 
because I, you know, I was super competitive. I didn't have kids and you know, I wasn't married, live with my parent at my parents' house. So I could just go be there as long as I want. And I would show up at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., right? And I, I would do it. And I remember, like, I remember it took like a maybe a couple months. And I remember thinking, it's the same 30 people every time I come in at 5 a.m., every time I come in at 6 a.m. And the rest of the time in the gym, it was always like you'd, you'd see you know, regulars, but it was always like this changing crowd, right? Because, yeah. you know, we were in big box gyms. And that's when I, and I remember thinking to myself, like, who the hell wants to work out at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m.? This is ridiculous. And then, of course, as you get older, you have kids, yeah. you have stuff that, and it's like, okay. Well, you, yeah, you can't interrupt it that way. It's, it just makes perfect sense. And, you, and it just, it, the only problem is the challenges is the whole, okay, I got to wake up early. You know, I got to, I got to do that. And well, then I got to go to bed on time. I've never felt as strong that early in the morning. Yeah, you know? totally. And, and, you know, so yeah, you have to kind of work your way through that. But I agree. It is probably the best strategy in terms of being able to uh, repeat that because nothing's going to like come in the way of your workouts typically. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And, I, and I, I do want to say, you know, kind of reiterate this, uh, the, of all the factors that you have to consider, and they're, they're all important. Uh, what kind of workout I do, intensity, sets, reps, exercise. That's all very important. We spend a lot of time talking about that. But if people just figured out the consistency piece for themselves, they would be 80% of the way there, you know? Yeah, I think, I mean, there's no doubt that the the 5 a.m. crew is always the most consistent in every gym. But a lot, a lot for me has been having empathy for myself when it comes to, like, I have to get this routine. Much of my, my drive in the gym was you know, uh, all about this look that mm -hmm. I was always trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. and, and it just wasn't worth it if you weren't all. That's right. Right. Yeah. And so I, I had this yeah. pressure of like, if I'm not making gains in, you know, muscle size or reducing body fat, I'm losing or I'm not, I'm not progressing. I'm not moving in the right direction. And so I had a lot of that attitude when I looked at my, my lifestyle. And as I've gotten older, I realized like, wow, the real reason why I'm doing this is to be able to move and play with my son, to be healthy and to be, you know, yeah. mobile. And like, when you think of those goals, if your goal is, you know, longevity and overall health and mobility, it doesn't always have to be this 50 minute, okay. you know, sweating, killing yourself routine. Sometimes it could be doing prime movements. Like Justin saying, like, you know what? I really need to address my posture. I haven't done any of that. So just sitting there doing the wall test for 15 to 20 minutes, like being okay with sometimes the routine doesn't look like this, you know, structured it's 50 minute. Yeah. Sometimes you're just, sometimes maybe it's just a good walk for an hour. Maybe like there's been times like that on the weekend where I just, man, I'm not, I need to go lift weights, but you know what? Even though I'm not into in it to go lift weights right now, I can throw on a jacket and go outside and go for a nice walk for an hour and go go for a hike. Like, you know, what the, you know what the irony of that is, Adam, is that you're without, and I know you know this, but for someone listening, the side effect of that is you end up looking better anyway right. because you're just consistent, right? Mm -hmm. So because you're not all or nothing and you're doing something, right? The side effect of that is what you would want from being all in all right. the time, you know? So that's that's the, the irony of the whole thing. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.